assembly. They're blowing hot and cold at the same time. But Lusaka Dynamos against the Kana Football Club will talk more about that particular picture. It's on your world of champions. For Forest Rangers, up against Concordia Blades, one of the most consistent sides as far as staying in Premier League football is concerned. Concordia Blades, they were playing away to you, Forest Rangers. On Sunday, it will be a super Sunday tomorrow because Green Buffaloes are off for picking up points. They will be up against my team of Florida Wanderers. Also, they really look steady as far as rising on the logs is uh, concerned. Napsa Stars, they're still in the relegation zone as far as uh, the logs are concerned. They'll be up against the Nakambala. Those do you promise to be mouth-watering fixes. Well, can't wait for tomorrow, uh, obviously, but we need to get uh, uh, this one here sorted out today. So, yeah, uh, good uh, football that to a lot of fans, Zambian fans, and of course, Africa that are following Zambian League will, 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 will be, uh, uh, you know, given to uh, this coming, this, this very weekend. So, let's talk about the changes that have taken place and as far as the log standings are concerned. Zanako uh, did have a midweek fix that has pushed them top of the table. One point better than Zesco uh, United who still have a, uh, you know, a game in hand and depending on how they will use that and apparently they are not playing this weekend so it does give them a much opportunity and much time to really uh, get themselves settled. But it's interesting to see in Quasi Football Club uh, as well as my team of Fido Wanderers, all these teams coming off really, uh, you know, at the lower ranks still in the top rank of the stands. Well, we saw, we saw that last season with National Assembly. They were ruling literally in the, uh, in the first half of the season. We're just hoping that uh, uh, the wheels won't come off in the second part of the season. But uh, so far, so good for Quasi as well as Fido Wanderers. You could say that Napsa Stars as well as Nakambala uh, you know, uh, uh, Leopards are in unfamiliar waters as far as the stands are concerned. But you could say the same you know, for Nchanga Rangers. They did have some issues in 20 in last season, but it seems this time around it's getting deeper. Well, for Nchanga Rangers, we want to feel sorry for them. They've got a very, very good side, a very good coach. Uh, Simkonda, who has hardly been with them also because he's attached to the, to the uh, junior national soccer team. So maybe that could be a reason I saw that it was being advanced. But, I, I, you know, from what we're told, there's a couple of stories behind the scenes that are not uh, working very well for the sides. But the biggest disappointment for me is also Naps Stars. I think uh, they were one of the top sides last season, the past couple of seasons. This season, though, things not working out, but they've only played nine games. So maybe they, they'll probably say that there's still some time to... To, to recover and hopefully they will rec recover but so far Napsa Stars should not be wallowing where they are right now. So there's a lot of concern as far as the stands are concerned there but Lusaka Dynamos did receive a shot in the arm when they did have a, you know, a new kit sponsor going forward but how does the coach feel really as far as how they have started the season this time around? We started very badly, we lost two consecutive games and uh, we followed it up with four draws and then we are two wins, so I think I should say I'm happy. You keep improving with each game that you play. Are you also adjusting on what you'd set as, as target at the start of the season? No, the target will always remain the same because our target for this season is to, to remain in the Premier League. So our target will always be to, to stay in the Premier League, to play Premier League football next season. But uh, in terms of improving, we are very happy. Being the squad we have we consists of mostly young boys who have never played in the Premier League. So when they are improving, it gives us also the confidence that we'll do well in the league. But our target will always remain to stay in the Premier League. How are you hoping to secure the maximum uh, three points against the 2013 champions in Ghana? Yeah, of course, in Ghana, big, being a big team, it's going to be a tough game. But we, we always prepare to have a positive result, irrespective of which team we are playing with. Because if we say it's in Ghana, it's Forest, then it, uh, we, don't need, we, do, we don't deserve to be in the Premier League. Because whichever team we are playing with, we must aim for the maximum points. You're coming off a loss. How have you helped your players recover mentally ahead of this game? Yeah, we have just told them it's one of those games. Uh, we played the first two games, as I said earlier on. We lost to the first game, Green Eagles, then Power. After that, we picked up uh, positive results. So a loss is part of the, of the game. It's, uh, the rig is a marathon, so we are hoping to have a positive results today. You could say something is really definitely happening as far as the Lusaka Dynamos is concerned. Two wins, two draws and one loss. That, you know, as far as the last five matches is concerned, there's hope going forward. Uh, a lot of hope going forward also. And, and, and Perimutap and Masao Sotembo, two great friends of the pitch. The two uh, coaches, I think, are doing a tremendous job. Young coaches, so you, you are seeing the future when you look at them. And also very young side. But really, it's in uh, Kunda, the top man that uh, 
uh, Lusaka Dynamo will be relying heavily on because he has gotten the goals this season. Now talk about uh, Thomas Kunda. He is currently, obviously, as you did mention, getting the goals for them. He's, uh, uh, but Jubel Sakala in the midfield, the battle, if you look at that formation, seems to be in the midfield. The midfield definitely will be very, very vital for them. But, but Jubel Sakala is the man. He pulls the strings. Is, he dominates in that midfield. And uh, Mkana will definitely be wary of his uh, antics in the middle of the pack. So let's see what will happen. But uh, you did mention of uh, you know, Thomas Kunda uh, playing up front as a lone striker. He is on four goals at the moment. Nkana hasn't considered that many goals. Will it be easy for him to go forward? Well, of course, Nkana have got a good side, but I'm missing, I'm missing Denashano Malam. Obviously, in that defense, Scott Gokane, the goalkeeper, the usual number one is not in there. So maybe he'll look at that lineup and think that maybe I can't get that goal. He is uh, strong, very agile, and knows where the goal is. And I think that he, uh, it will be to their own... Uh, Perot if they ignore him and, and kind of football club. So let's see how much of exploits they will be able to put forward and as far as the two uh, you know, impact players are concerned. But for Nkana Football Club, they're equally ready. They are better on the road. Does he have that confidence? That's the coach now. Let's get to find out. Yeah, so far we've been working on our striking force and uh, uh, they're improving. And uh, I hope in today's game they will change the scenario. You'll be playing without your skipper, Donashano Malama. Uh, Scott Ngoken is still serving the sentence. What impact do these absence of these players bring to this game? Yeah, Captain Donashano is one of the important players in our team and we will miss him, but I have an impressment to Peri Mubanga, who is more senior. I think he will, he will take care of that position. And Scott, I'm happy now the suspension is over. He may join us in the coming game. You're playing Lusaka Dynamo's very pacey. Most likely the game would be. How are you hoping to cut down that pace? Yeah, Lusaka Dynamo is a youth team and I have assembled a team which can handle that pressure and, I'm, and I hope the boys will put up a good fight and we are ready for Lusaka Dynamo's. You've picked out more points out playing away from home coach. How confident are you this afternoon? Yeah, at least um, I have that confidence away from home. And, uh, you know, sometimes these young players, they feel uh, they, they don't have that heart sometimes when you play at home. But when we play away, I think they always put up a fight, a fight where there's no pressure. And uh, I hope even today they'll stand in that, in that area. Best on quick catch on Beshi Silva there. Very optimistic as far as collecting the maximum three points on the road. But that's the formation. The two distinct formations going forward. But there's a sense that the battle will be in the midfield still. <laughs> most, most definitely here. They've, they've got uh, Joseph Staley, for instance, in that midfield. And Kana, a, a lot will be dependent on him. Claude Wally, a very speedy uh, midfielder as well. So just get the feeling that um, whoever wins that battle in midfield could probably do the trick uh, for, for either side. Obviously, it's very important to have a look at the impact players. We, the coach has mentioned that uh, you know Don Shano Malama is off as well as a squatting Ngoken. He's serving his last match ban, but Joseph Staley is in the midfield. Well, he comes in and brings in a lot of experience as well. He's played professional football in Congo. He's uh, back home now. He's played for, for power. He's now with Nkana. He's such an exceptional player on his day. He'll give any team a headache. And uh, going forward, Shadrick Msonda came off the bench, got the goal. He's now in the starting lineup. And the times you wonder when he's on the bench because you feel like he can walk into any starting lineup of any club in the league. He's such a versatile player, very quick on the wings. And I think he too will cause all sorts of problems for Lusaka Dynamos. And obviously, Joseph Sitali, Shatrick Musonda, that combination, it's a question of whether we'll be able to break that Lusaka Dynamos you know, defense going forward. But let's get your predictions. Uh, just get the feeling that Nkana Football Club will have a bit too much. They have been exceptional on the road and they, they are on the road. I just feel that Lusaka Dynamos could probably register their, their second loss uh, on the trot. Now, obviously, the pep talk and as far as the pitch side is done. Uh, up next is Lusaka Dynamos up against Nkana Football Club. In the next 45 minutes, our commentators Franklin Tembo Jr. and Innocent Kalaku take care of the business. squarely on his shoulders. Now let's talk about the absence of Dona Shano Malama in that particular defense but it seems uh, it's, it's becoming porous every minute they open going forward. Do you feel that they're missing that link? There? Oh, without a doubt, Dona Shano Malama just isn't a player who is very effective but I think he commands, he, he marshals his defense. It's not happening here. No one seemingly is taking charge of that defense and really that's what's opening them up completely. Every time Musaka Dynamos go forward they seem like they're going to score. We did speak of a replacement in given Sinyangwe, you know, in that particular area. But if you look at what's been happening going forward, obviously Elvis Kataya at this particular moment, talk of Sinyangwe and obviously the 
all the defense stands up there on the end being rooted out it seems there's there's no coordination well no coordination indeed but again take nothing out for, uh, uh, from Kataya's uh, I think uh, individual brilliance look at that after he gets that pass he still had Shimba to deal with he deals with him very very well and the goalkeeper came out still had the goalkeeper to deal with but he spotted uh, 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 an opening there good pass there spotted the opening look at Shimba he comes beaten clean the goalkeeper comes out and also beaten you know clean so really Kataya very very uh, good on that occasion and I think there you know, I think credit should go to him because he had a lot to do and he, uh, he did very well on that occasion. It could also be said that maybe the midfield, the formation, 4-5-1, the living one striker up front in Kunda, but eventually they still have quite a lot. We haven't seen so much in as far as exploits on target by Nkana is concerned, but that was the only shot we could capture, 30th minute for that matter. Well, it should be also said that uh, maybe we're not counting the fact that they did score, only that they were offside, but this man, Shadrick Mson, has been their main man uh, going forward, has been pushing a bit at times, a bit selfish, you know, and, but also maybe it's a frustration because the rest of, this, of, of, his, of his team have not come to the party at all. Uh, Shibuya, for instance, big, very, very strong and last time very reliable as well. It's not happening for him today as well up front for Nkana Football Club. They seem to have adopted the passing style of football and they are taking it too far into the goal area and it's not working well for them. Let's have a look at this particular goal in this instance. Again, on set pieces, they've got those short passes but they're not seemingly working out. Well, Kataya, again, uh, had quite a lot to do, a uh, bit of his mark, and the likes of uh, Perry Mutaba, they're excited on the bench, obviously. But uh, I think uh, they really don't know what's happening themselves. Uh, like I don't know that they expected this kind of result. They were giving a lot of respect to Nkana because of it, at passing the ball. They're excellent. But I think they need to finish off games, and they're not doing that. But look at the strength there again by Kataya. And goalkeeper, again, nowhere to be seen. Same corner that they're getting their goals into and really in Kana, I can't, I can't imagine what's happening in that, uh, in, that, in that dressing room. Now let's summarize the first 45 minutes for you as we did you know, allude to the fact that the midfield seems to be the center of attraction as far as where most of those balls are being worn. You know, shots on target, Lusaka Dynamos, if you see what's happened, they've got more attempts on goal and yet again you could, you could still tell as far as the, the corners are concerned. In Kana, they're passing more when they approach the goal line and yes, they're having those corners. Yes, uh, definitely. On the corner count, doing very well. Possession-wise, doing well in Kana. But like I was saying, they're, they're just passing the ball around. They're not direct. Well, and that is the, the, the huge difference for me because uh, Lusaka Dynamos, I, whenever they get the ball, they know what's on their mind. It's only one thing. Get to the goal and shoot on target. And Kana will be looking for the next player. Joseph Staley, unfortunately, is out in that midfield for them as well. And that is a problem for Kana. Now, talk about uh, what we should expect as far as the second 45 minutes is concerned. Ball possession was obviously in Ghana Football Club leading in that area. But we have to look at something, you know, in, in a sense, because if you look at those stats in there, it tells you something in as far as how committed the players are going forward, at the same time defending. They're working as a team, they're working like a machine, Saka Dynamos. They're going forward as a team, they're getting back as a team in midfield, they're dominating, they're chasing every ball. And Kana, at times, for me, you feel that the underrated uh, Lusaka Dynamos, especially when they got those two goals which were disallowed, I think in their minds, they just switched off saying, well, we're winning this game and well, uh, the stats is saying something completely different. All right, Kara Football Club have already met that substitution. Joseph Sutali, a, obviously he's out now, and but he, they, they still have quite a lot of players that could change the game. They signed close to 12 players during yep. the transfer window. And, and if you see most of those players, as far as the strikers are concerned, they, they're right at, with the bench. Yeah, Kanda, for instance, probably should be starting. Uh, he's not really impressed, but uh, still he's a, quite a good striker. Also, Kasusu should, could probably come in. But now they will be panicking a bit my, because my now, question, my question is yeah. why why have such quality strikers on the subs bench when they could be they could change you know your your, your exploits in far of goal. Well, they've got too many uh, good players, and at times that can be a bit confusing to the to the coach. And at, if you look at Lusaka Dynamos, well, you you kind of can't pick the ones that will start the first eleven. But for Nkana, it's very difficult to pick, and believe me, it should be a bit of a headache for the coach as well. We've had the very best in as far as comebacks in football are concerned. Do you see a comeback in this instance? Unfortunately, I don't. I think that uh, they've got the tails up Lusaka Dynamos. I don't see them uh, throwing away the three goals. Yes, and can have the experience, but Lusaka Dynamos way too excited here, and they've definitely got the, the better of Nkana. Nkana really have to dig deep if I thought that it's going to work, but. Uh, unfortunately, I have to change my prediction here. I think Lusaka Dynamo is carrying this one. <laughs> now, let's talk about what uh, the coach said earlier on in our pre-match interviews. He did mention that Lincana Football Club are good in as far as, you know, on-the-road performances are concerned. Uh, 
is this ruining what could have been a good uh, you know, way to gain those three points? Well, let's just say he meant they were good on the road. I don't think they're any good today. They, they've been shambolic. They've been very good to look at. But football is about goals, and that is not happening for Nkana. All right, let's talk about the influence that the fans uh, might have in as far as changing the complexion of the score and is concerned. And kind of has the largest fan base in, in the country. Well, they've switched off. They've gone completely mute. It's like a was very small fan base, but they're definitely noisier than Nkana. Nkana are talking to themselves, are coaching from, from the terraces, that it's really not happening for them today. The 12th player, very much needed though for Nkana. If they can come up and start just pushing the team, maybe something could happen. All right, it's very interesting to see somebody change their prediction. Uh, having seen what's <laughs> happened in the first 45 minutes, is concerned. But we still have much more action. And as far as Bola Yapazet is concerned, it's Lusaka Dynamo's leading Kana by three goals to new. Our commentators will be back shortly with the second half.